Uh, Hunter, hang with us for just a second. I want you to explain this. This is Tampa Bay. It looked like this hours before the storm made landfall. Water in the bay essentially just pulled out. Some people say it did the same thing before Hurricane Irma. That was back in 2017. So, Hunter, can you kind of explain exactly how this happens and what's going on here? Yeah, really interesting stuff. Again, kind of the opposite of what most expect with these landfalling systems. But it all has to do with the wind direction and whether you have onshore or offshore winds. So here we are earlier this afternoon, Cat 4 making landfall. Now Tampa and Tampa Bay, north of the system, with the counterclockwise winds around it, you have that offshore flow. So what was happening is the winds from Tampa Bay were actually being pushed away from shore and out into the ocean. So that is why the water levels there actually dropped. Meanwhile, you go center of the storm and point south. That's where you have that onshore flow. So for Fort Myers down towards Naples, south of the storm, all of that water is being pushed into shore. So if you are north of the system, the storm is pushing water away many times. But if you're at the center and then point south, that's the onshore flow where the winds from uh, the center are pushing the water into the coastline. Now I was looking for the Fort Myers area. They also have their high tide coming up here in about an hour or so. So again, the storm surge threat there still very much ongoing and we're going to have more on Ian coming up later in the show. Brian, so much to consider with a storm this big. Hunter, thanks a lot. We'll check back in with you in just a few minutes.